Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, making a quick video about the gospel tracts that we're doing, but if you want to turn to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, I want to start there. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Remember, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. What's going on here? Here it is. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Meekness and fear. Uh, we're going to be talking about gospel tracts. Uh, we preach the word of God. Okay? We do it with meekness, but there's still to be fear there. There's always people you're going to come across that say, Well, I don't know if I would really talk about hell when I, when I preach the gospel. Uh, yeah. Uh, to save sinners, well, we're not supposed to be so judgmental, and I really wouldn't talk about the judgment seat of Christ too much. And on and on and on. All right. 16. Having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you, how many can raise your hands to that one? Mm -hmm. As of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversations in Christ. For it better if the will of, if the will of God be so that ye suffer for well doing than for evil doing. There's a song that um, Seminole String Band does where it says if I have to spend a hundred years down here I'll not regret it for he sold it long ago. He sold it long ago. For up there I'll not regret it for he sold it long ago. Long ago down on my knees talking about salvation. If I have to spend, we always talk about the catch way the body of Christ might happen right now, but if we have to spend another 20 years here, things just keep dragging on and God's showing his long suffering trying to get people saved, which is what we're going to be talking about. Um, it's worth it. Me giving my life to Christ is worth it. No matter what we have to go through down here, it is nothing compared to what we're going to go through up there with the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? That ye suffer for well-doing, then for evil-doing. Verse 18, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. The hope I give you, brothers and sisters of Christ, is we're trying to get that last soul saved so we can go home to be with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We can be with the body of Christ. No more lost world. No more atheists. No more Catholics. Uh, no more dealing with this light. This, this is, Jesus came in the lightness. I was about to say lightness of sinful flesh because we did that study together, brothers and sisters of Christ. But we are in sinful flesh. But no more being in sinful flesh. Be ready to give hope. My hope to you, brothers and sisters of Christ, is Jesus is coming back and he's going to take his bride home, the body of Christ. And the time of Jacob's trouble is coming closer and getting closer and getting closer. Okay? But we still need to stay diligent in preaching the word of God and preaching the gospel to the lost world. If you want to turn to 2 Corinthians 5.18. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ. I had to highlight that blue. <laughs> As the Godhead. There's only one capital G God, the Father. 1 Corinthians 8, 6. All right. Only one capital G, the Father. And where is the Father? In Christ, the soul. Reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespass unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. That is our plea to the lost world, be ye reconciled to God. True biblical repentance is having godly sorrow for your personal sins. And we've been there, brothers and sisters in Christ. Your personal sins that you sin against an almighty, righteous God that's going to judge you one day. 
the God of all creation, Jesus Christ. Okay? And what we're telling them is, you need to come broken. And that's the number one thing we're not seeing today. We do not see brokenness in people. There's so many people, over half the world's population believes in a Jesus Christ. But they were, oh, I, 99% of them refuse to repent. Oh, repentance is just going from unbelief to belief. We can, I can go through this all over. It just, it's just that, that we have such love for people, brothers and sisters of Christ, that we are sitting there and we're praying you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. We want to see you get saved. We want to see you go to heaven. We don't want to see anybody go to hell. There's a lot of people out there that hate me. I want to see them go to heaven. I want to see them come to God broken with godly sorrow for sinning against Him. True biblical repentance. And it just breaks my heart every time I keep coming across people that seem like they, they love the King James Bible and they seem like, you know, they might be saved and you start talking to them in repentance. Well, no, that's just going from unbelief to belief. All repentance happens after salvation. That's in the life of a Christian. It starts at salvation. For godly sorrow work with repentance to salvation, which means it has to happen before you get saved, and God's the one that does the saving. And from that point on, your walk with the Lord, um, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross daily, and follow me. That's the life. The repentance goes all through your walk. Sanctification. Okay? I'm still repenting to the Lord to this day. Okay? Um, but the whole point is, brothers and sisters, we have such love for the lost world that we're trying to preach truth to them. And what we're seeing a lot lately is people are just that come saying, well, I think I'm saved and I want to be saved. And you've got all these people just patting them on the back. You can have your sin. You can have this world. And we'll call you a brother or sister in Christ. I mean, you have, you have, huh, I can go on. I just come across people that are like, this person's saved. And it's like, okay, where's his testimony or her testimony? And they don't have one. And they're like, how do you know they're saved? You haven't even heard their testimony. I'm very big on testimonies. That's why I like people emailing the uh, ministry here with, um, with testimonies. That's your, how God saved you, what your life was like before you got saved, how you came to God broken as a sinner, but having sorrow for that sin, giving your life to uh, believing in Jesus Christ, giving your life to Him, and then, you know, confessing both in prayer, asking Him to save you, saying, Lord, save me. And now when you're saved, you belong to Jesus Christ. There's this big fake thing going around saying, you're free, you're free, you're free. And it's like, uh, we're free from the law of sin and death. Romans 8, it's 8 or 7. Um, we're free from the law of sin and death, but now we're under the law of God. We're still under a law. We're just not under the law of sin and death. We're under the law of God. And right now, present tense, we're under the law of sin. Death got dropped. We're still in this body of flesh. We're still going to sin and we're going to struggle with sin. We're going to be repenting throughout our life and walk as a Christian. That's there. But you're not free. You belong to Jesus Christ. Right? But we're, that's our job. We're supposed to be passionate. But remember what we read in Peter. We're supposed to do it with meekness and with fear. There needs to be fear there. I, um, what was it, uh, when I was younger as a false convert, I remember getting introduced to Isaac Air Freight, and it's all about jokes and fun and, and laughs and everything, and they say that we use this ministry of joking and making a mockery of things and making fun of things to witness to people, but where's the fear? Meekness, right, and fear. Verse 21, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God by ourselves. By our faith. No, it says, of God in him. Through Jesus Christ. He's the one that saves you. He's the one that imputes his righteousness to you. Right? He does the saving. But I read that um, just to encourage you, brothers, this is Christ. We need to get out there and 
I'll say this, you might not be called to, I had a brother that he's amazing, he gets out there and once or twice a week he'll get out there and try to give out a thousand to two thousand gospel tracts. He purposely goes out just for that purpose because God, he feels God calls him. He needs a lot of our prayer right now. They've put in 5G and now that he's been going out, he comes back with headaches and in these major cities, they're putting 5G in there and it's really destroying people. And people aren't getting it. They just love their technology, and it's all about technology. And I even know some brethren who, they, it's, like, it's like they worship technology. Um, the technology isn't always good. I'm not 100% against technology, but oftentimes technology is a way to, so we can be lazier. And it also is a way to promote sin in the flesh. Um, and a lot of you out there could be nodding your head saying, I can testify, I can testify. I start going back to doing things the old ways. Uh, seek the, the old paths and it takes more time to do it but it keeps me busy keeps my mind on Christ Jesus Christ and his word and it's something and I'm doing it in a way that glorifies him right? uh, there's nothing wrong with doing things the, the long way as they call it or the hard way in other words what we call the old paths but um but brethren, I will put the link to his video. He's making a four-part video. He's the one that helped me create these uh, gospel tracks. And if you want some gospel tracks, uh, just email the uh, the ministry here. I have an email address for the ministry, and we'll email it uh, or write a letter to the ministry, the PO box. But um, you can request some, and we'll send you some of these. But here's the thing he made a good point about. I don't have a lot of money, and as you notice, I only put up a donation tab because I had an old camera, and people were saying it's starting to shake a little bit because of the wind being outside, and it wasn't, quality wasn't the best. And I asked him, I said, well, I'll put a donation tab up and see if the brethren want to help me, because at the time, I was still trying to get out of debt of some mistakes that I made, and... Um, I didn't have a lot of money, and I'm just letting you know I don't have a lot of money now. However, uh, God has helped me just live frugal, and the whole point of this is, without me fumbling too much, is I want to do my best to try to, out of my own pocket, to try to mail gospel tracts to people. And I have a brother, uh, Matthew, in Canada, who's going to do all of Canada. But the point is, is it's not cheap. Okay, Canada, for some reason, it gets expensive to mail stuff in Canada. Um, and uh, we're not like some big organization or big company where we can just buy like a stamp that we just put on the envelopes and it automatically pays the post like we play one flat fee and that goes makes it up for all of it. So the point is, is in the future, we're going to see how this goes. If, uh, if people just start going hardcore on us saying, hey, we want gospel tracts, we want gospel tracts, the video I'm going to send you to the link will give you a link so you can print your own out. The thing with him though is he's got a good printer that can do the heavy hard stock. And this is really heavy duty. You know, you can get a little bit wet and it doesn't ruin it. Um, good card stock. Okay. But he's going to give you the link and he's going to go over some videos explaining how he created them so you can create your own. You know, to make sure you follow the steps of repent, you know you know, letting them know what sin is and that they're a sinner, about what repentance is, belief in Jesus Christ, who He is, and confessing both in prayer and asking God to save you, and you talk a little bit about the changed life. And one of the biggest things I would say if you're creating your own gospel tracts is, um, I don't know if I get close enough, but I, I showed them in the last video I did, when we did, uh, um, when I did a video about this, and in his video he'll show it close up. But tell always the first, the best thing you can always tell them to do is get a King James Bible. Okay? Make sure it's on the gospel track. Get a King James Bible. Okay? And then put some good King James Bible uh, ministries that tell you the same thing. Get your own King James Bible. Follow along. Read. You know, uh, what we read earlier about putting this in your heart. Sanctify the Lord in your hearts. You know, put the Word of God in your heart. And as they read this, they'll, they'll get saved. Or, and grow closer to the Lord if this didn't do it. But if they go, well, I don't know why it's not that, but I do remember it saying get a King James Bible. I've always heard about that. And they get a King James Bible and just start reading it. You know, God will point them and lead them to the right spots, just like the verses that we use in here. 
Okay? That's how great God is and that's how God works when people are truly seeking Him. Okay? So he's going to do a video. And uh, so go ahead, you can email the prayers. I'll put it down in the link. I'll, uh, link. I'll put his video that he's doing. I'll put the link or put in there the email for this ministry. And I'll put in the P.O. box for this ministry. And you can request some gospel tracts. I want to start trying to give you some of these in just smaller envelopes. So there's not going to be lots of them. Um, the way he'll explain the way he'll be emailing it and shipping it and stuff like that. Uh, so bottom line, I guess I could say a little bit. He's folded them for me, which is great. But when we go to ship them, if we leave them completely flat and cut them long ways, we can get three tracks per paper. But we can get you a very thick stack of like 50 or 60 in an envelope and mail it. And it's going to be like five bucks to mail it. Um, so it'll be kind of cheap that way. Uh, doing boxes, it gets expensive doing huge boxes. But it'll be cheap for that way. And he's going to do videos to show you how to fold them, what he, how he has them set up. He's going to show you where you can go download them and print them out yourself. If you have a nice printer that can do the thick cardstock, um, where you can tweak it out a little bit and put you know your own stuff in there for what um, Bible-believing, God-fearing ministries you want to um, endorse. Uh, I just pray that they are Bible-believing, God-fearing ministries. Um, I always infiltrate God-fearing. People say, it's just Bible-believing. You always hear this. When I first got saved, hardcore, you need to find a Bible-believing ministry. You need to find a Bible-believing ministry. You need to find a Bible-believing, God-fearing ministry. Okay, they might quote the Bible and they might talk the talk, they might speak Christ, but are they actually in Christ? What that means is their walk with the Lord, is their fear. When they find out they're doing something wrong and they get it out of their lives, is their fear. You know, they preach on hell, right? They preach on the judgment seat of Christ. You know, that's why I named this Bible-believing, God-fearing ministries. I did that for a reason. We need to fear God. And fearing God isn't knowing God. Fearing God is simply that. You need to fear God. When you get tempted to sin, that fear of the Lord needs to come upon you. When you get tempted to change God's word, to compromise, that fear needs to come upon you. Okay? When you start realizing you get, you're getting too prideful, there should be fear from the Lord. Okay, That fear needs to be in the man that's behind that camera. The fear of the Lord, not of the world. We aren't given into fear, but peace. That's from the world. God will give us peace in this world. And this world is so wicked. And there's so many people that we thought were saved or just fallen away. And some people I still believe are saved. Um, some of them it's like they're falling back into the world. The, the falling away. Okay? So... One more thing, Brother JT did this book, uh, How to Be Saved and Know It. I'm going to try to get in contact with him and see if he's going to update a couple things on here. But I would honestly like to get some of these too, so I can maybe in the envelope, when you're doing these long ways, I can at least put one of these in here for you guys. And um, these are a little bit more costly. Like I said, I'm going to try to do some of this out of my pocket, but if this gets, God's like, yes, I want this ministry, and he gets it kicking off between Brother Matthew and me, um, we might put up a tab for donations. We're going to have to because we don't have a lot of money. But we're going to try to do this. Uh, but like I said, I'd like to do this and then put this in with the envelopes, big, uh, I want to say copper, but um, cream envelopes, you know, and then get the 50 tracks and get one of these books in here because I do like this one. This one is a great book. Okay, I do hand these out. Um, I'm, I grab like 15, 20. And I'm down to four of them. I think I might have one in the card for emergencies. Uh, but these are the ones you hand out to people that you've already handed out a gospel tract to. Or, and they come back to you and they're asking good questions and they seem like they're really interested. I mean, they're really, it seemed interested. This one goes in great detail. It's a great book, How to Be Saved and Know It. Lots more verses than I can fit in a little gospel tract. But like I said, these aren't cheap. <laughs> You know, this isn't something like, uh, I think the brother said that he can print these out, uh, three tracks a page, um, and it's like a few cents, like one to five cents. This is like a dollar to three dollars. I can't remember. I have to look up online how much we, how much I bought this for. 
but I'd like to do this, so I'm going to get in with him because he took, took the first initiative way before we're doing this to try to get out a good track that preaches the truth of the gospel. Okay? Godly sorrow in your heart for sinning against him. It's not easy believism. It's not that you just say a prayer and you're in. God's the one that does the saving. And if you don't come to him broken, sorry for the life that you're living, which is a wickedness and sin, God won't save you. Okay? So I will leave it at that. I don't think there's anything else for this video. Um, just, brother, sister, Christ, stay out there. Keep preaching the true gospel. Those of you who have fallen, I've said this before in the previous video, but I'll say it again. Uh, my prayer is that, you pick, that God will pick you back up. He'll pick you. If you're truly saved, He'll get you back up one way or another. And I, I know this sounds mean, but whether you like it or not, He'll get you back up one way or another. And he'll go even as far as to kill you and bring you home early. And you'll miss out on rewards. I believe that 100%. But my pray for, prayer for you is, we just looks like we're in the last days. And I keep hearing all kinds of stuff that's going on out there in the world. And it's like, Jesus can come back any moment. You need to get up. And I'm going to do a study on this. It's, it's put, God put it on my heart. Um, when Jesus comes back, what's he going to catch you doing? Okay. Um, is he going to catch you faithful? Or is he going to catch you doing something you know you're not supposed to be doing? Is he going to catch you standing firm? Or is he going to find you flat on your face? Part of the falling away. So, pick yourselves back up, brothers and sisters in Christ. If you've sinned, get that sin at the foot of the cross. Repent, forsake, and move on. Have godly sorrow. Repent move on and get back to doing the work of the Lord. Get back to doing this. Now, like I said, I don't know if I finished it because sometimes I have to jump to another thought real quick, but I'll say it again if, if I'm saying it again. Um, the whole point of this is anytime you go into town, you can drop gospel tracts off anywhere. Okay, you can stuff them here, you can stuff them there, you can just lay them. I went to a mom and Paul's uh, like a diner type thing. It's just a small place. They've got pictures of, of the lighthouses and the beach, and it's the two old ladies that run it. Um, it's, it's just a small place, and they cook fresh meat that's local meat, and we're sitting there, and I walk there, and I look at the newspaper stand, and I put one on the newspaper stand, and as I'm sitting there eating with my daughter, and because we were doing laundry, the laundry's next door, and to save one water, we're doing laundry uh, in town, uh, there's a little corner spot I saw up there, and I said, well, next time someone sits here, I'll put a little gospel track in that corner. When I was in the laundromat, I put gospel tracks in magazines and stuff like that. When we went to Fred Meyer's, I dropped them off in the bathroom as you're walking around. Fred Meyer's was so packed, I did And people will get on to you, are you afraid of the gospel? It's not about being afraid of the gospel, it's about keeping the doors open. So, I, when I try to slip stuff in, I don't, I, it looks like I'm being secretive, because I kind of, I am. I am being secretive about it. Um, when people, the Ibereans, had to go to um, Rome to witness for so many years before they came back to be elders, they had to be very slick. Remember what the Bible says. Let's see if I can find that one again. We talked about it recently. I think that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Matthew 10, 16, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So don't feel guilty if you're, if, if you're sneaking them in there, because I do the same thing. I sneak them in stuff, and I, I put them in places and stuff like that. And I'll still, God's given me courage that God really puts it on my heart at this point. I try handing them out to people too. Nowadays, it's like everybody's wearing masks. It's like you're, you're in like, like a different... Like, this isn't even the real world, but it is. We're having to deal with the real world. Um, but that's what I meant by, you know, you don't have to go out purposely because you might not feel called to go out with thousands of tracks every week to, you know, purposely go put them out and everything. Praise the Lord. God puts that on your heart, and that's a passion that you have. But we should all be handing out gospel tracks regardless. Um, so that's the whole point of this, is to get some good gospel tracks out there um, so we can get that last soul saved, so we can, so I can tell you about the hope, you know, always be ready to speak that hope. Brothers and sisters of Christ, we're not going to be here for much longer, all right? God's coming for us any day now. I'm sitting out there, I'm looking out there, and I see a cloud out there, and 
and um, I'm like, it's just blue skies, and it's, it's all foggy down by the ocean, but it's blue skies out here where I'm out on the mountainside, and I look out and I see a cloud, it's just a small cloud, just out in the middle of nowhere, small cloud, and I just look at that and go, Lord, is today the day? And evidently the cloud got up the hill just enough that it hit the heat that we have up here versus the cold that's down, on, like the temperature's cold today on the beach. And it hit that cloud, and the cloud just dissipated really quick into nothing. Like I'd have to say within like three minutes of staring at it, it became nothing. And I actually got a tear in my eye. And I was like, oh Lord, I guess today is not the day. And remember... That's not necessarily what the Bible's talking about when you're looking for Jesus Christ. It's talking about sanctification. When Jesus comes back, how is he going to find you? But I'm not against looking up at the sky and saying, Lord, is today the day? And there was a tear that dropped. And I just, I was shocked that there was a tear dropping because it really hit me because that thing just dissipated when I asked the Lord, is he coming today? Um, it's not, it might not be today, but he's coming soon, brothers and sisters of Christ. Um, I, it could be by the end of this year. I mean, there's so many people saying it might be a little bit longer, but brothers and sisters of Christ, everything, I love Brother Brian and that video, everything he said, his reasons why he thinks that the catching away is further down the road. Um, it, there's two sides to, those are, to that argument, or to that discussion. There's no argument, there's no debating. There's two sides to that discussion, because there's easily to say, well, right here, this can happen overnight. See, it's right here, it's already here, it can be implemented overnight. The temple, everything's ready to go. They can have it built in a few months. Boom, temple's built, just like that. That's how ready they are. That's how ready we are, or we're ready, but that's how ready the world is to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. Let's say it like that. Let's see if that works better. So that's that. I'll send you the link down below. Please go watch the channel. And we're just, we're just trying to do our best for the Lord to do... Um, the brother just had it on his heart that he really loves gospel tracking. It's his thing. He gets really called to get out there and do gospel tracking really hardcore. He's gotten on the computer. He's done all the programs uh, that he's done. So he knows how to make tracks, tracks the way he does. And he does a great job. Like I said, uh, eventually from the track, next set of tracks I get, I want it to be... They see hell here, they open it up, they see heaven, they open it up, they read left to right. And then while it's closed, they would see this on the back, you know, get a King James Bible. That's the best advice you can get someone who's newly saved. It's like, there's no better advice. Get a King James Bible today. That's the best advice you can give them. Um, so, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.